All right, guys, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zim with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be breaking down this 10 game slate. Okay, it's going to be a doozy. We got a lot of injury news to go through. And actually, because it is a bigger slate, instead of doing the top five plays, I'm going to do the top 10 must plays for this slate. Okay, bigger slate, and we have a lot of quality of plays. So I want to be able to touch on all of them for you guys. Remember, if you guys do enjoy this coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe. That helps me be able to help you guys out a little bit more. Yesterday was a, was a pretty fun slate especially if you guys are someone that played on FanDuel. I touched on Cam Johnson being a great play on both FanDuel and DraftKings, but he really came through on both of them. You know, that was great. And then you have Wendell Carter as well. Wendell Carter, I liked a little bit more on FanDuel as well. Core play for FanDuel, a player I mentioned for DraftKings purposes, and then a bunch of other players just went off and had a pretty solid productive night. So hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of that. All right, I want to start off this video, though, by saying DeMar DeRozan on FanDuel is going to be a good value on FanDuel. Okay, DraftKings, I do think he's priced up a little bit too much, but on FanDuel, a little bit too cheap. Someone you can look at there. All right, so the top 10, the 10th player that I like on this site is going to be IO. So we've seen them have a pretty good game each of the last four games. Now, yes, two games ago against San Antonio, that smash spot. He got injured, okay? Had to leave the game for a little bit, and then he sat out a game, and then last night was his first night back since that injury, was able to score 32 DK points. So if you just take his last full three games, they've been all over 30 DK points. And now given this matchup with Charlotte, it's going to be a matchup in which you want to be targeting as well. And it's actually one of the best matchups on the slate from a DVP PPM, defense versus position points per minute. Charlotte gives up uh, top 10 on the slate. So with the potential that Zach Levine could be out as well, that's just going to cement him as a quality play. Now, I still think he's going to be a good play regardless because I still think he's going to get right around 30 to 34 minutes. Okay, so he should be able to get 30 DK points. Obviously not a lock and load. Obviously still some risk associated with this play, but given the matchup, given the price point, given the recent production, he should be a strong play for you on this slate. Number nine for me is going to be Luka. I do want to just touch on him for a second here. He does get a pretty good matchup on the slate. Um, not a matchup in which you're worried about. Okay, obviously been very productive thus far this season his worst game thus far has been 56 dk points which sure we want 60 dk points out of him and i do think we'll get that tonight uh 12.3 a lot to pay up and he is kind of an obvious play i you know i, I hate touching on like saying luke is a great play and Giannis is a great play which they both are on the slate but on the slate we're going to have a lot of value so i do think there's a route in which you could go to play luca or you could play Giannis. you could play both of them actually uh your lineup's not going to be as good but if you play both of them you could be locking in 130 dk points just from those two and then trying to figure out the rest from there uh so yeah luca on the site i do like and then you guys already know who one of the players are going to be okay like honestly you probably guys should have just came in and commented all right, I know Laurie's going to be on your video, in your video. Where do you have him ranked? Because, man, he has he has made me look good. You know, there's been a bunch of players that, you know, throughout each season and sport kind of make you look good. Marketing's been that guy for NBA DFS. I mean, every single slate I've been on him thus far this season, and he's only let me down once. I will definitely take those odds, okay? He's a guy that has a nice high floor, and we've seen the ceiling be extremely high as well. Okay, 60 DK points in the last game. That was great. That was a little bit lucky. Shot the ball very well. Okay, and he actually didn't shoot the ball too much. Only 15 shot attempts. It's kind of strange there, but he is someone that can certainly be productive once again. I like the floor. Okay, the floor should be 35 DK points uh, with the upside to go for 50. Okay, maybe he only gets 30, but he should be a solid price point play. Now, eventually, yes, he's going to have a bad game like he had against Houston. Okay, that's going to happen for now until DraftKings prices him correctly, which really should be 8k price point range i'm going to continue to roster him i mean seven point stakes is still very cheap for him relatively speaking now yes the matchup's not as great but he still should be a strong play for you so ant Fernie nee simons I, I that name just doesn't roll off the tongue for me i apologize but he is someone that i'm looking at with damian lillard, lillard out he is someone that does see a big increase in usage or about nine percent increase in usage so his usage per 36 with lillard off the court is 30 percent uh averaging 35.8 dk points uh, per 36 with Damian Lillard off the court. That's across 88 minutes in that sample size. So a decent sample size. Um, the thing with it is, it's like, I don't think it's guaranteed. And the price point is enough to which you have to think about it. Like if he was $600 cheaper or if he was like 6.9, then yeah, I'd be really gung ho about him as a play. But I do think he's kind of priced correctly. Maybe we're getting a little bit of value. You know, the thing I like about him is he's a strong GPP play. Maybe not a cash play for you because there are I think safer plays you can go with, but for GPP purposes, we've seen two out of his last three games, 52 and 47 DK points. So the ceiling is certainly there for him. So I will be chasing that ceiling. Okay. The shot attempts should be there for him. The assists should be there a little bit more for him and maybe a couple more rebounds. So yes, I do like him a lot on this site. He is someone I'm going to be looking to play. So honestly, for this spot, I was 
choosing between Cade Cunningham and Drew Holiday going off against each other. Cade Cunningham had has just been on a tear. Four straight games of over 48 DK points. A very solid play for you on the slate. I like him. Like if I did 12 or 11 of my favorite plays on the slate, he would have been in there. Uh, Drew Holiday, though. Let's touch on Drew Holiday. Gets a great matchup. Gets a top five matchup on the slate. Once again, talking about that uh, defense versus position, points per minute, top five there. Uh, and we saw that last game against Detroit. 52 DK points. Okay, that was spectacular. Against Atlanta, 60 DK points. 66 DK points, sorry. Um, yes, the price point's a little bit weird to pay up for him, but at the same time, like at the start of the season, had you told me Chris Middleton would be out um, this long, you know, I would have said, yeah, Drew Holiday for sure. He's, he's pretty much a safe 40 DK point play each, each game, especially against easier matchups. And we've seen him be able to take advantage of easier matchups. New York, Houston, uh, Atlanta, Detroit, like he's been able to take advantage of those easier matchups. So I do like uh, Drew a lot on this slate. He's number six for me. <laughs> And then get into Kevin Herter, guys. Kevin Herter, it's weird. I, I don't think he's like a, a must play because he is priced correctly. But at the same time, he could easily go for 44 DK points. Like he is a very strong GPP play. Um, man, I think he could honestly be, it's weird. He could be 4.5 and I, we'd be locking him in. He could be 6.6 and we'd still be looking at playing him. That's kind of the scale of which makes him an interesting player on the slate with De'Aaron Fox out. He has seen a 23.7% usage rate per 36 minutes. He's averaging 49.6 DK points with De'Aaron Fox off the court. Now, we're not expecting that, okay? If we can lock in 30 DK points at this price point, which I think we'll be able to do, then I love Kevin Herter. You know, price point-wise, great price point. The fact that we can play him at a guard or forward position on DraftKings makes him highly appealing as well. Great play on FanDuel as well. Like, both a quality play across both of uh, FanDuel and DraftKings. So, I will be putting him into my builds a lot. We've seen him go off for 40 plus DK points the last two games. Just a strong player for you guys on this slate. And then from there, guys, Russell Westbrook coming in with the second unit here. He's not starting anymore. And since he's been with the second unit, he's seen 34 and 39 DK points. Okay. We're seeing him become the old Russell Westbrook, honestly. Uh, it seemed like they were trying to fit a, what's the saying, a square peg into a round hole by playing Westbrook and LeBron together. Okay. It, it just didn't make sense. We all knew it. We all knew one of them would have to kind of sacrifice their role. And instead, they just said, hey, Westbrook, you need to come off the bench and you're going to command that second unit, going to do what you've always done. So I love that. It's great. So we're pretty much getting Russell Westbrook, classic Russell Westbrook at a cheap price point. Like we should be getting a safe 30 DK point night, even if he has a poor night shooting, because then he should get a little bit more assists and rebounds with that second unit. And we have the upside, I think, to get 45 DK points. Okay, the Pels are not a matchup I'm particularly worried about. So Westbrook should be a quality price point play for you on this slate. From there, a uh, play that I really like price point wise, kind of value wise, is going to be Marshall here for the Pelicans with Brandon Ingram out. I think he those minutes that he's been getting the last three games are going to be cemented. Okay, the last three games, 39, 35, and 33 minutes, getting uh, 35, 38, and 18 DK points. Okay. Very good stuff there. Honestly, if we get 18 from him, it's like, oh, well, it was a correct play. You know, I, I'll be fine with that. As long as the minutes are there, he's going to be a pretty good play. And we look at what he's been able to do thus far this season with Brandon Ingram off the court per 36 wise, around 20% usage rate and around 31 DK points per game on average per 36. Okay. So per 36, not per game, a strong price point play to me. He's someone that opens up a lot on the slate. And for now where I haven't been able to find like elite value, He's one of the players I'm really strongly going out of my way to play. Now, others are going to say, like, Justice Winslow is going to be a good price point play. Josh Richardson are going to, going to be good price point plays. Like, I'm fine with those plays. I like Marshall a little bit more. And then my top core play on this slate, guys, is going to be our second best core play on the slate. Is going to be a player that I was already on thus far this season. It's going to be Brooke Lopez, okay? He was the cover boy from two nights ago's video when he played Detroit and had 39 DK points. The thing with it is DraftKings has not responded to his price point. I will say on FanDuel, not a must play. DraftKings, kind of a must play. His lowest DK point total thus far this season has been 27, okay? Kind of had a poor night shooting that night and uh, didn't get that many rebounds. It was pretty much all he did, and it was it was a uh, kind of a blowout game, okay? 5.4 for a guy that's coming off of three straight 36 plus DK point nights in a great matchup against Detroit, in a matchup in which he just went for almost 40 DK points against. I think this is a very strong price point play. It should be the correct play, okay? If it doesn't work out, I will I will take it. Like FanDuel, you'd probably be forcing it in a little bit. DraftKings at this price point, just kind of an easy play. So it should work out. The only way it doesn't work out is if Giannis and like Bobby Porsche just absolutely go bonkers. And then the top player on the slate, I know he's probably going to be the highest owned player on the slate. Uh, probably should be though. Davion Mitchell in the last game with the De'Aaron Fox out, which was so annoying because 
De'Aaron Fox was smashed against Charlotte. That's a matchup you want to be chasing. Mitchell went for 34 DK points, which good on him. He had a great night shooting, though, and that's part of the worry. Okay, so like if he's like extreme chalk, like I'm talking over 50%, maybe you think about fading him because, man, he's not going to go five for six from three and nine for 11, you know, shooting the ball. That's just not going to happen again. He's going to go 20 for 21 instead. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but the thing is, like the usage should be there. We look at his usage rate with Fox off the court. It is about 20%. So we like that. Uh, per 36, he's averaging uh, 30 DK points. So the thing with him is, is he should be a strong price point play. Now, is he going to give you 40 DK points? Probably not. But I think that's within the realm of possibilities. Is he going to Is he going to give you guys 20 DK points? Probably. Okay, so at this price point, it is kind of just a must play on both FanDuel and DraftKings. And then, like I said, guys, we have a, a lot of salary left over currently. So there's a lot in which you could do lineup wise from here. Like you could really make whatever lineup path you want work. Um, so just to close out the lineup, I took out AO and went with Kate Cunningham. Fine with it. That works. We'll take that. So let's hope. Let's just do math. Let's say 40, 20, 40, it's 100 right there. Let's say 20, 30, 30. We're at 180. Okay, let's say. 30, 210, let's say 40, 250 as a floor for this build. I will take that, okay? It's a good solid starting point there. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Please give me a like, subscribe. If you guys want to become a nine to five member, gets you access to the NBA DFS DraftKings lineup optimizer, as well as the NBA DFS cheat sheet, as well as other sports like NFL DraftKings lineup optimizer available there, as well as the NFL DFS cheat sheet, as well as the PGA premium package. All that's included for $10 a month. All right, check it out. Links in the description below. Let's have a good slate. And as always, guys, let's keep cash.